I found this dry pod design on Bamboo Labs Maker World that you would pour desiccant into. I didn't print out the version with the hygrometer. Uh, there's already a moisture sensor in the AMS, although it only gives you one through four, but I like that it included the small end pieces so that you could maximize the amount of desiccant that you put into the AMS. I have a few ideas that I want to pursue with the AMS and I hope to add to this video after I've had a chance to test those ideas. But for today's video, I thought this would be a great opportunity to show a few techniques in a simple fusion remix where I took the lid of the small container and remixed it into a funnel which could be used with the small or large container. And I uploaded the resultant file to Maker World as a remix. If that's something that you are interested in, please join me as I show you how. The first thing I'd like to show you is how to get an STL out of a build plate in Bamboo Studio. If you start with a 3MF file or download directly from Maker World, you may not have an STL to start with. Just delete all the things on the build plate that are not what you want to work on, then right click on the one object you are working on and select export as one STL. Save it in a convenient location and now we can import it into Fusion in the same way I did in the last remix video. Choose insert, insert mesh, select from my computer, find the file that you want and hit enter or open. Now that your shape is imported, hit center and move to ground, then okay. We have imported the shape, but to remix it, we need to do a couple more steps. Select the mesh toolbar, then prepare, generate face groups, select your part and hit okay. Now we want to select modify, convert mesh, select your shape and click OK. It's now imported and ready for us to work on it. The first thing I'm going to do is simplify the shape by deleting unnecessary triangles. I'm going to do that by clicking on them and hitting the delete key. Then I go back to the solid toolbar and create a sketch and attach it to the top of my part. There are a number of different ways of attacking this remix, but after some thought I decided to put in some construction geometry. I then created a centered rectangle equal to the size of the lid that I was remixing. I used the offset tool and using my guidelines adjusted the offset until I was happy with it. Selecting the extrude tool, I pushed the center rectangle down through my part which converted it into a cut. I selected OK. I added fillets in the corners of this new hole in the part and you'll see why here in a second. I then created a sketch on the front plane and used the project tool to pull geometry from the part into this sketch so I could reference to it. I created a rough closed shape and then added dimensions to it until it met my view for this part. I then selected Create, I selected the Sweep tool, I selected my sketch as the profile, and selected the inner ring as the path. Those fillets are important because they create a smoother path for the sweep. Make sure it's set to Join, and then select OK. I realized I got this far without saving and quickly saved it. This part of the original lid was to stop it when the lid was fully inserted. However, since I'm going to use the same funnel for the full size desiccant box as well as the small one, I need to remove this feature. I considered a number of ways of doing this and I decided to try the simplest, which is just deleting excess triangles. Uh, surprisingly that worked, simplifying the part. I then used the press pull tool to push this part out and Fusion correctly identified that it needed to remove the thin feature that would have been left over. Since that worked so well, I went over to the other side and tried the same again with success.
I decided to simplify this face as well by deleting unnecessary triangles. I added a small fillet around the outer edge of the funnel to add a little bit more strength. You want to avoid sharp corners and small features, especially at the base there. And sometimes you got to fiddle with the settings a little bit to get the fillet to work. I find that the on-screen slider often doesn't have good increments, so you have to actually go in and type in just sometimes it's just by 0.1 until you get it to actually work because there's some feature that's preventing it from calculating the fillet. In this case, after sort of looking it over and looking at how it had been applied, I decided I really wasn't satisfied with the fillet, so I removed it, which is the beauty of the Fusion Editing Timeline is you can go back and you can change things if you don't like it. So I used the Extrude tool, pushed that up until it actually made full contact, and then checked to make sure that it wasn't poking through the inside of the funnel, and it wasn't. So I felt like that was a much better way of achieving what I was trying to do. I expanded out the browser, uh, went into bodies, and then right-clicked, renamed, changed it to reflect that it was actually a funnel. Then right-clicked again and used Save as Mesh. And this time I'm exporting it in the 3MF format instead of STL format. It will show you the error that that is not viewable in Fusion Teams, but you can just ignore that error and save it. Then I drag and drop the file into Bamboo Studio and it will give you this warning. Do you want to open it as a project or do you want to import the geometry only? And I actually overlaid it on the previous lid that I was remixing and just kind of looked around it to make sure that it indeed actually was completely perfectly lined up. And it was. That's what we're actually looking for here. So I deleted the lid so that only the funnel was on the build plate and sliced it. I always like to pull down the slice layers and look at each layer of the 3D printed part as it's sliced because sometimes you'll find errors, mistakes, or things that you kind of don't expect or want to adjust and you can change that in the slicer. After looking at it, I decided I really wanted to curve the top of that funnel and sort of ease that edge, which generally speaking, uh, fillets and chamfers should be applied to all sharp edges. You should just avoid having sharp edges in your design unless it's necessary. It concentrates stress and it's also uncomfortable. And once again, when applying fillets, you have to adjust the settings carefully to get the effect that you're looking for. And I had to type in by point whatever, and you can see that if it's too large, it actually changes the height of my funnel significantly. So I had to hunt and peck and find the right chamfer, excuse me, I had to hunt and peck and find the right fillet size that it eased the edge without shortening the funnel. The other thing that I realized is that the features on the bottom that allow this to slide in as a lid are not very pronounced, so I decided to add a very small feature onto the funnel to show you which direction it would slide. So I added a little arrow here, played with it a little bit, made sure that it was uh, centered up on this face that I created the sketch geometry on. And then extruded that little part. After extruding it, I added a chamfer around it to reduce its impact on anything being funneled through it. Again, avoiding sharp edges and uh, those kind of issues. And if the first time you try to apply a chamfer or a fillet, it doesn't work, you may need to change the exact feature that you're applying it to, the exact edge that you're applying it to, and you may also need to change the size of it. So I went back in and made the feature a little bit larger by applying some dimension. Once again, save as mesh. It'll give you an error if you're outputting as a 3MF format. Uh, I decided to overwrite my previous file and then drop that 
new updated file into Bamboo Studio. I used Auto Arrange to just move it to a place in the build plate away from the corner, uh, resliced it, and then looked at the slice layers to see if it was slicing it the way that I expected. I also went into the seam position, which is where you're, you have start and stops of your extruder on each layer if you're not doing a vase mode. And I moved it to the back next to the, the arrow just to make it all in one position instead of in multiple locations as before. And I played around a little bit with those settings until I was satisfied with it. I always look at my final sliced part from multiple angles, cut through the layers, and just sort of look around it as a sanity check to see did anything go wrong before I kick it off and send it to the printer. With a printer that has a live camera, it's a good idea to always check your camera before you send a print to make sure that it's ready to print. And in this case, it was not. I still had things on the build plate, so I had to run over to the printer and pull that off the build plate. Make sure that the entire build plate was clean and ready to go before I started the print. Of course, it's always a good practice as soon as the print finishes to pull your build plate, make sure that it's clean and ready for the next print, but things can get missed, stuff happens, so it's always important to check your printer before you send a print and make sure that the build plate is clear and ready to print. With the build plate clear, it's time to send it to print. Of course, it takes time to upload, and then I come back and check on the print later, and I could just sit here and watch printers print all day, I feel like. This is your moment of zen to watch the printer just do what it does. I really love the speed of the Bamboo Lab printers. I like printing prototype parts out of transparent filament because it allows you to not only see the outside, some of the inside features, but also some of the engagement features if this is uh, connecting to another piece or part. Sometimes you get a little bit more information out of the transparent, not that it's completely crystal clear, but it is useful. Through the magic of editing, however, we can just skip to the end and get our final part. So let's go there. The part took just about an hour, and here's what it looks like printed out of transparent PLA. For those of you that love ASMR, I'm not going to speed up this next clip, and I'm going to stop talking now. The small desiccant packs barely fit in there, which means that the designer has maximized the volume, which is fantastic. This is what the final product looks like with all of these printed out of transparent PLA. It isn't perfectly transparent. It does allow you to see the desiccant color indicator pretty well, uh, but you can look at this and decide whether you like a different color for your dry pod print. The remixed file has been uploaded to Maker World, and I'll include links in the video description below. I hope you found this tutorial helpful or at least interesting. 
Through the magic of editing, though, we can skip all of watching the part and just go to the finest.